Today we are diving into something brand new and super exciting and I'm talking about Spring AI. We'll explore what Spring AI is, the new features it offers, and I'll walk you through how to build a simple controller that connects to a local Olama model using the new Olama chat model class. Think of it as a Spring Boot of AI integrations. So what is Spring AI? It's a new experimental project from the Spring team that aims to simplify the integration of AI models like OpenAI, Hugging Face, and Olama into your Spring Boot applications. Just like Spring Data abstracts database calls, Spring AI abstracts LLM and embedding model interactions. Here are some of the key features that have been introduced with Spring AI. First of all, the chat clients. It abstracts away the raw API calls. You can see in some of my previous videos where we've been using Olama that we had to create client classes in order to be able to connect to the locally running Olama instance. But now we can use interfaces like chat client or model specific ones like the Olama chat model, which is the one I'm going to show you in this video. The next feature is the prompt templates. We can easily plug variables into prompt templates using the prompt template class. Another interesting feature are the output parsers. It converts model output into structured Java objects like parsing JSON to a POJO. We don't have to do that manually anymore. You can see an example of that in my previous videos where we use Olama. Another interesting feature is the embedding support. Basically, we can generate and store vector embeddings for similarity search. And in my next video, we're going to look into this more in detail. So don't forget to like and subscribe this video. Another feature that is going to make AI integrations easier is the simple configuration. Just like any other Spring Boot starter, we can drop in a dependency and configure it via application.properties. And last but not least, we've got Retrieval Augmented Generation, which is also abbreviated as RAG. It combines our vector store with LLMs to build powerful AI power search apps. And that's exactly what we're going to be building in the next video. So don't forget to hit that bell icon to be notified when the new video drops. Enough talking now, so let's jump into a quick demo. We are going to be building a simple application that is going to have a controller. We are going to be using Spring AI, more specifically the Olama package. And we are going to be calling DeepSeq Coder running inside Olama on our local machine. This is going to be an interesting but simple demo that is going to show you a quick way to integrate Spring AI into your Spring Boot application. If you are interested to have a more in-depth look into this, you can check out the Spring AI documentation. We are going to be focusing on the Olama chat and they also have documentation on that. It tells you all the prerequisites that you need. For example, you will need to have Olama installed. The first thing we need to do now is create a fresh Spring project. So I'm going to be using Spring Initializer to create a Spring Boot project using 3.5.0 as the version. Keep in mind that if you go for an older version, the Olama dependency is not going to be supported. So I've selected the latest one, which is the 3.5.0, and I'm going to be using Java 17 with Maven. And the dependencies we need are simply Spring Web, Lombok, and the new Olama AI package, which is inside the Spring AI project. So add these three and click generate and let's open this in an IDE. So here we have our project in IntelliJ. We are going to create a simple controller that is going to receive as input a message. And then that message will be sent to a locally running instance of DeepSeq Coder inside Olama and we will show back the response to the user. To do that, we're going to be creating a controller. So let's create a controller class. I always like creating packages because it makes code so much easier to follow and it also looks cleaner. So I'll call it Olama controller. In here, we're going to add a couple of tags. So this is gonna be a REST controller. Let's add the request mapping. So this looks good. Next thing, we're going to be having a Olama service class. So I'm just going to create it. It's still red, but we'll create it in a minute. And I'm going to inject it to the public constructor of this controller. 
now let's create the actual endpoint which we will be calling so it's gonna be a, a json uh, it's gonna produce json as well and this is the path so i'll call it prompt let's create the actual method that is gonna handle this uh, as you can see i'm using copilot which is quite handy let's now create a service package let's create the olama service So this is going to be a service class. I'm also going to add some logging. So we'll use the SLF4J inside Lombok. And let's get rid of these errors. We are going to be going back to our service class. In here, we want to use the Olama chat model to send requests to the locally running instance of Olama. So to do that, we are going to be using Olama chat model. As you can see, this is part of the spring framework.ai package so as i said we can add configuration in the application of properties or we can also use a config class i'll show you both so let's start by the application of properties so in here i'm gonna add a server port i've got other applications running so i'm just gonna be using a 77 you don't need to add this if you're just gonna run it on the normal port. Let's look at these uh, application dot properties, which by the way, you can find on, uh, on the documentation. So we're gonna be adding these two. The first one is the one that defines the model we want to use inside Olama. For those of you that are not familiar with Olama, Olama is basically a wrapper that is able to run multiple AI models. That's why we need to define the model we want to actually call inside Olama. In this case, I'm going to be using DeepSeq Coder. We can also have this pull model strategy. Let's say your Olama instance does not have this specific model. You can decide what to do in that case. In my case, I've decided that never is the best. Let's say I'm testing. I don't want this to be pulled into my Olama list, but it's up to you. You can put never, you can put always. So let's say you've installed Olama and you don't have this AI model. If you've got always, this is first going to pull your AI model and then do the call. So I'll just put it back to never. As you can see, this is one of the new features. We can add configs in the application of properties. The next thing I want to show you are configurations using a class. So I'll create a new package. I'll call this Olama config. And this is a configuration class. So I'm gonna add a, a tag. And now let's create a bean. This bean is of type chat client. And it takes a chat client builder as input. And it's going to return a builder where we are going to use this default system attribute to give some context to our AI model. So in this case, I decided this is going to be a Java assistant. Uh, by the way, you can have multiple chat clients. You don't have to be restricted to one. Let's go back to our service class. Let's inject the Olama chat model in the constructor. Uh, I'm just going to add auto wire, but this is not really needed. Spring has advanced so much that code is becoming better and cleaner. And now we're going to do something really simple. We are going to get as input the prompt we got uh, by the REST controller. We're going to log it. Then we're going to use the Olama chat model to call Olama with this prompt. As you can see, it's literally so simple. This line of code is going to be calling Olama on our local machine. We did not have to define any kind of port or IP address. And that's because it's already configured by default inside this Olama chat model. We're simply going to be passing the message and then we'll get the message back as a string response in this case. And then we'll print this response and we'll send it back to the controller so that it's sent back to the user. And that's all we need. So we are ready to run this, but quickly, if you have not already installed Olama on your local machine, Open a terminal and run brew install Olama. Don't forget to run Olama on your machine. So you need to have a running instance in the background. So as you can see, I'm already running Olama on a new terminal window. And if I do Olama list, you can see that I already have these models on my machine. So I'm going to be using the DeepSeq coder, as I said. 
let's go back to our ID and let's create a run configuration. So I quickly create one, I'll call it AI Olama. Let's select the main class, apply, okay. Let's run this. So the application has started successfully. I'm going to be using Postman to send a request. So I'm going to create a post request. Here we have the REST controller we have defined. Our port is actually 8077. So it's not 8079. And now we are gonna send us body a JSON, which is gonna be the input. And I'll ask it, what is a singleton in Spring Boot? And let's see what happens. Uh, so we got an error. Let's see what it is. Okay, so it looks like there is an error here. Okay, we are missing a tag, basically. Uh, we need to add the request body. Sorry about that. Let's rerun this. Let's try again. So a request has been sent. So this is being processed by our local instance of Olama. And as you can see, we've got a response back. You can then take this response and you can show it to a front end or do whatever you need to do. Let's have something else. It is an abstract class. Uh, we don't really need to say in Java because we already given some context if you remember in the Olama config. You got a nice response back. It took five seconds. Not too bad, I guess, for a model running on your local machine. Let's take a quick look at the logs. We can see the response also here and this is running as expected. We've just built a simple REST API that connects to a locally running AI model using Olama. And you literally saw how easy it was. We just had to add this line. And if you compare it to what we used to do previously, we had to write a full client class with a REST template, then do a post request and handle the responses. You can see an example of that in my previous video, which I'm gonna put here on the right. If you want more videos and you've got more ideas on this AI topic, leave them in the comment box below. And if you found this video useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe.